Hey everybody, it's Bruce with Lebowski Studio. Welcome to another plein air adventure here in Maine. Uh, today I'm going to be working on an 11 by 14 of this view right here with the road and the house in the distance. And uh, we're going to get started. I have the uh, canvas toned over an old uh, painting that I discarded. So we're going to get going. going to be working with uh, some Lindsay oil for medium if I need it. And I'll go over the palette later. And don't forget to uh, check out, check me out on Facebook at Abowski Studio, like my page, and uh, my website www.abowskistudio.com. And if you're new to the channel, I want to thank you for checking it out. Subscribe to see more cool content. Turn on your notifications. I'll alert you when I post a new video. And for everyone else, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's get started. Hey everybody, I think you're really going to enjoy this video. I'm super happy with this painting and I urge you to watch the whole video because I offer some really useful uh, tips and ideas in the uh, real-time commentary that I do. So again, enjoy the video and I'll get back to you later. Okay, I've got a base of value sketch in. Uh, I like how the balance of shapes is going and the composition. I used this uh, little view catcher item. I think that's the name brand. Yeah, view, view catcher. And uh, the second time I've used it purposely. Um, normally I'm just too lazy. Happens. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of liking this as a tool to isolate the composition, pick out key points and map them out, and then you end up with this. And I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. So uh, now I'm going to start getting some color tones in there. In this case, I just use a very pale value study. I had enough to go on to put in uh, other tones. And on some subjects, I may want a more uh, definitive value scale, more darker values and lighter tones, that sort of thing. But this was enough at this time. Now, right now, all I'm working on, I'm actually using, a, by the way, a little uh, liquid impasto gel. Uh, I'm just worried about uh, getting some base tones to start to get a read on relationships before I commit to super thick paint or anything like that. So what I'm doing is uh, right now it's just mixing up some cool greens for the uh, shadows. And then I'll strike in the warm highlights where the sun is catching. I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty nice piece of liking the composition so far. And this is pretty thin paint, but it's a color note. And then I can read it if I feel it's accurate. And it's also a speedy way to get going on your painting and getting to see if it's reading correctly. Uh, that way, if you have limited time or something, you'll at least have the accurate color notes and, of course, your palette, because you keep track of, of, of your palette, which I'm going to go over later. Um, also, some shadows here near this tree are going to be darker than shadows over here, because now light can come in and infiltrate that uh, shadow area. So, never mind, of course, color variations, but little ideas, uh, little things to be perceptive of and that can add to the realism of your piece if you so choose. So I'm going to get sort of a darkish base in and then lighten it up with some cool yellow. Just getting some variation with some cool yellow and I'll Modify that later. There's hints of it here, over here in the uh, shadow, but not much. And I don't know how much the iPad's catching, but it's really kind of popping already. I like the lead in of the road, very fun. Working on stretch canvas, I normally don't. In my outdoor work but trying to broaden the horizons my painting horizons I should say and 
experiment with surfaces. I wouldn't say experiment, I've painted on canvas before, but shake it up a bit. You get some nice scumbling effects that are uh, handy. Let me go ahead and knock in a little bit of distant. What do you call it? Tree line way in the back. Mute it down. Not too much, just but enough that if it's a little too dark, once I get other color notes, because I don't feel I have enough in yet, but this will be the start, especially against that dark tree in the right here. Uh, I can always lighten the uh, tone. Sometimes if you have it too light, then it's too too much trouble sometimes to darken it. So just kind of a flat poster like shape right now. As I get other elements going, then I'll commit to modifying it if I need to. I may find as I get to later on stages that I don't have to do much to it, but I want something as a, an average value back there. I definitely want to push that back. Sometimes in nature, it looks like it's on the same plane. I mean, there is no real, especially because it's kind of clear light, uh, but you have to kind of, you have to do your own adjusting to have it read as a painting and give depth. So I will be lightening that a little bit, throwing in some purples later. I'll go ahead and do some of those purples now. little lizard and ultramarine blue because ultramarine blue already is uh, leaning towards purple trying to do a little impressionistic broken color aspect to it just to make it more interesting and this straightness here, once I get the sky going, is when I will I can modify that. I'm not too concerned. All right, we're going to continue with some time lapse. I'm going to knock in some uh, lights on the road, the grass here, get some of those notes in there. Okay, now I'm going to be uh, mix up some color for the sky, some cobalt blue, a little bit of cad yellow with uh, lots of white to get it a nice pale morning kind of color and may not show much on my ground that I have, testing it against areas I've already painted. Kind of pretty dead on match so I'm gonna commit to that and put that in there using a bigger brush here a little bit of the liquid impasto gel and I'm gonna save around around here I'm actually gonna go ahead at least on the edges anyway, block in some color for that shadow tree because I want to take this sky color and cut around those leaves to define them. So let me go ahead and do that. Kind of got ahead of myself, but all right, hold on.
All right, I'm back. Now we're going to get uh, the sky cut around the tree. Sometimes I'll paint the tree after, but this time I'm going to try to... I'm just going to do it different because I want to have some crispness to the edges of the leaves. So There's not going to be any really sky holes in here because we're seeing tree behind tree behind tree, so very non-existent on the edges. I want to try to just do this first to define well really suggest some uh, individual leaves near the outer perimeter of the tree sorry with my talking it's Sometimes tricky to paint and talk at the same time. All right, now I'm going to start committing and creating some strokes, working with this small quarter inch flat, and then I'll take a bristle brush and work those shapes out. This is where I'll also start shaping the background a bit. not going overboard I can always cut in more that's the key don't go crazy right off do your initial strokes do less than you think you need and then study it because once you get crazy and you gotta try to correct uh, good luck with that so it can be done but it's a nuisance so Just kind of see how you want the leaves. If the shape itself is boring, like this is kind of boring. I, I'm kind of making it interesting. Tie into some of the painting. So just getting those shapes. Cutting around this tree. This is one reason why I do like painting on canvas is it really gives a nice scumbling look to the paint and as you layer more colors over it breaks them up a little bit easier it's really kind of fun cutting around some of these poles trying to create some shapes in the background trees which I'll integrate and soften up so there's not a hard line I want to keep some hard line around my focal point there I'm going to really try to minimize some other hard edges kind of fun too like where I was putting the sample tones in before with the palette knife now I can manipulate those with small brush here and then try to create some interesting shapes all right I'm going to continue doing that do the same that I did over here over here and uh, do some time lapse. Okay, this is where I'm going to just spend a minute or two uh, reflecting, pause and reflect, I call it, to uh, just sit back on my back of my car here, have some water for two three minutes you just look at the painting I got enough color tones on here to start to study it and see where I want to start ramping up certain parts 
uh, I like the tree over on the left. Of course, you don't want the same size shape, but it's a nice uh, element to keep the viewer's eye right in here. And uh, so I'll get back to you. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of just dancing around, strengthening up some darts. Uh, of course, getting the uh, base tone dark on the tree on the left. That will manipulate potentially later. And then, of course, in the shadows that you see me working on, getting some layers in the shadows, not just a, uh, one value. I think that adds dimension, of course, because uh, parts in the shadows are catching light differently. And it's interesting to see the painting come to life three-dimensionally as you start knocking in some lighter lights and darker darks. It's really... As long as I get those three values to begin with, my midtone, my light, and my dark, it'll look realistic right off. And then I can nuance the uh, more subtle values in between those. But that'll give me some range to work with. And, uh, yeah, it's really coming along pretty happy with it. So one thing I caught myself doing is uh, these poles are okay, but obviously this pole is going to be a little thicker than these poles because it's closer to the viewer. So I'm going to repair that and uh, something to be cautious of. I cut around it with the uh, sky and when, then when I put the color in for the pole I didn't go far enough so I'll fatten that up a bit to create a sense of uh, scale. Doesn't need to be a whole lot very little bit getting uh, washing out the brush getting a little more purple color into the uh, shadows where the Sun is starting to come up and the cast shadow is on the pole I think I'm going to go, go ahead and play that up, see how, see if I can bring that out a little bit, get a, give it a little, little chromatic flare. Too dark, add a little white to the ultramarine blue. There's another little one right there. I try to get a little uh I'm not gonna do too much more I've been at it for a little bit lights change a lot but little details I want to put in just so I'm reminded that they're there and that is a uh, little mailbox up here in the area here so I'm gonna put that in just a little hint Just a little glare on top of the box. Now I got to do just a hint of a shadow that's cast onto the ground. So let's go ahead and get that going. Now I'm just Committing to shadows that I created and color tones from the beginning just to add some interest. I'm liking, I'm liking the purposely high keyed this shadow, and I think I'm gonna leave it there. Until I get home and study it in away from the subject, indoor light, that sort of thing. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you can get away with it, but I have to put power lines in. This is going to be fun. Uh, it's hard to know just how much to put in sometimes. But with this many poles... You can't 
not put in. So I'm going to give it a whirl. These are always tricky. I don't really have a set technique for it. And the good thing is I have some sky color left over. So if I mess this up, I'm going to try to go make a decision. I don't need, I'm hardly touching the canvas. I've got a pale purpley color on the brush. And of course it's slightly mixing with the sky color. Corrections I might make obviously are I'll correct them with the sky color. Doesn't have to be some uh, perfect electrician sort of uh, is going to look at this and go what what are all those lines? The general public will understand. As I get closer to viewer, I'm going to try to darken up the color a bit. I cut through this, in front of this tree line, obviously. Okay, now I'm just going to probably do a few more adjustments. Save the sky color. Areas. It's such light touch of paint on there that I can just make it go away. Slightly ghosting over that so it's not too strong. Looking at things here. Touching up just a couple things. I never did put the shadow in on the house over here so I'm going to do that just get some pure white on there mix back into the tone I just put there to carry over to the other side just a hint and I'm going to brighten that up just a bit lighten it I should say And you kind of know when you're done in the field when you start to noodle too much. Yes, some things you want to then go back and soften edges before the paint dries, that sort of thing. But Be careful. And of course there's details in the uh, roadway. I'm going to try to suggest some of that, not too much. I don't want to break that up too much. So let me work on that. Okay, everybody, I'm going to wrap up this uh, plain air adventure. I'm pretty happy with the uh, result. I don't know. Been at it about an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes, something like that. And I got enough information. I'll finesse a few more things for texture, bring out some levels like that. Uh, touch more work on the roadway, nothing major. But I'm really happy with it. And I want to thank you for joining me. And if you like this video, please share it with your artist friends and let them know about my channel. Again, I invite you to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And for everyone else, thank you for watching. And until the next adventure, bye. Okay, the palette I used was uh, Burnt Umber, Titanium White, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cad Yellow Pale, Cad Yellow Medium, Lizard Crimson, 
and CAD red light split primary.